Right, what are we building here? So I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. I was really proud of this bottom bund until I got out of the excavator and realized that it's all kind of ganky and, and kind, of, uh, kind of bubbly, I guess. But what we're building here is the bottom part of a terrace where we're packing clay. Now a lot of that soil has dried up and stuff, so we, we scraped off the topsoil and then we packed the clay. So we're digging down into the soil, getting that clay, and we're packing that clay into a bund here that's about two widths of the excavator uh, so that we can have a stable uh, in stop or foot to a level terrace, which will have two containers on it. And um, those containers are gonna be on a gravel pad. Now, why is this so important? Well, first off, tracking this in is the only way to compact this hill. So you have to have a right composition of materials. So let me show you something here. This, this is red Virginia clay. And what I did is I excavated it out of this, out of this ditch. Now, as I go along, I'm filling the dish, ditch in a little bit as I'm, as I'm um, using the blade to smooth things out, which obviously it's not very smooth because you can see that it's a, there's some little bumps and jumps um, that, that will work out today with the, probably with the skid steer. But I excavate up clay. I move aside anything that's not clay. I excavate up the clay. I put it in front of me and then I spread it out. Now you can see on the end over there the difference in color of the soil. So we have more of a, a gray or a tan versus this red. And that tells me that up there that soil is not all clay. And so what we did is we brought in some, some clay from other areas of the property in order to fill in that particular area but what what happens is we track in a a hill here so I'm gonna turn around here in a second I'm just kind of seeing this is see this feels a little soft over here I'm gonna have to track it in some more and get more clay but what we're doing is we're building a level terrace a small level terrace at the end of where our large level terrace is and we're making sure that it is packed clay that is a solid mass of material that is here for um, to kind of be like the toe of the overall uh, pad. Now it's most important again to get the clay in place. You can see my footprints here. You can't see my footprints over there. So we're gonna have to scrape more clay into here. Now we could take out some of this sand. It's not really sand. It's kind of like a like a drier clay. Um, and there's clay underneath here. So I don't. We don't need to scrape it all out. But we do need to keep packing it in and keep uh, tracking it in. And then this outer edge needs to be cleaned up. Now we're cleaning this outer edge up last and that's where I've been kind of throwing the stumps and things. But once the clay is in place and we've kind of built this hump back into the hill, because again, we can excavate into this hill as we need more materials. We're gonna raise this area up and we're gonna bring that area over there down. And there will be a point where we'll be able to just uh, skid steer and push it into the hole. But this big hole that we're excavating is again about getting clay out. We're not trying to hold water. We're trying to uh, prevent saturation of the hill from pushing through the bottom and ending up down in the woods. So what is this useful for? Well, if you're gonna build a giant uh, garden area and you want a level terrace, um, if you're going to build a home site, now if we're going to build a home site, we'd have bulldozers out here, by the way. If there was going to be a permanent structure here, um, and we would have bulldozers um, because we would need to cut this whole hill out. We'd probably end up taking those trees out too. Um, but essentially, in the Army Corps of Engineers manual, there's a designed for a cut cross-cut forest road. That is essentially what we're building here. We're building the road, and then we're gonna cut back the terrace even further uh, to give us a level area to put our, our gravel pad and our container. But what I'm standing on here is a critical component. It's actually keyed in to the ground. So we are, we cut a notch, mounted that soil up, tracked it in. Cut another notch a little bit higher up the hill, put it in a pile, tracked it in. Now there are some rocks in this in here, but we try not to get too many rocks because when we smooth the outer edge and we're finished with it, we're gonna cover it with grass. Now, where is the gravel pad gonna go? Well, the gravel pad cannot go over top of this bund. And this bund is going to be 
uh, at least as wide as the skid steer, but likely two to three times as wide because if you can see the tracks there, you've, you literally do have to track everything in so that it's compact and so that it stays in place. So our gravel pad is actually gonna have to go into the hill over there. So we're okay with cutting that hill hard all the way across that edge there and building this out. Now I gotta have 120 foot uh, clearance for the fifth wheel to get in here with the containers. So if we have a north-south orientation, we're a little tight on the edge of the woods over there, but uh, because they can come in through where the uh, excavator's sitting right now, uh, they, can, they can still get in and then they can go back out this other way. So there's a, lot to, there's a lot to consider. That might be why there's no videos about this stuff online or very few videos, because it isn't a consumer job. You really do need to survey. Um, you really do need to, if this was gonna be a permanent structure, you'd need compaction testing. Um, you would want to uh, make sure you have access in, a, in road frontage. So there, there's gonna be a path across the front here. So once the containers are in place, there's room to get things in. Maybe it's a hard format to show. But if you have any questions about this, um, there are designs online, but it's really something you wanna manage a project. You don't wanna come in here and try to do it yourself. You wanna get somebody with bigger equipment necessarily. It'd go a little faster. You wanna somebody to understand why we're tracking in material like this. And then also, I actually did this and you can see, uh, I don't know if you see it on camera, but there's like low ditches in there. And then there's a low ditch over here. Uh, that This really does need to go on smooth. Now, one interesting thing, uh, and, and I've had experts tell me how to make this work. Also, I've read manuals and, and, and we got practical people on site. But you really ought to lay this material out thin, just a couple inches, track it in, couple more inches track it in this is actually built inch by inch I know what I'm standing on is very stable I can feel how how strong it is and I can see the definition of the tracks it tells me that the, the clay composition is good um, but when I get out on that other end it's not so good and if that's not so good and it we get end up getting a what's called a water lens behind this hill because remember we're downhill we're in a watershed then it could push through that other side over there now we're gonna fix that. We're gonna trench it out. We're probably gonna make this clay bar much, much wider. But I want you to understand how this goes into the design. It isn't just draw something on a piece of paper and then start building. If you're doing earthworks, you need people that have done earthworks before or have worked on construction projects or otherwise can show you a design on paper before they come out here and start working. Because if you do this wrong, even though there's so the gravel pad is a porous structure. It will soak water into the ground. And if it builds up a water lens behind here, it'll be a muddy mess and it'll push through and go right down the hill. And so you have gotta have, again, the right equipment, the right people, the right methodology, the right approach. We're not doing anything uphill here until this bar is done. And this bar needs to be tracked in, it needs to be level, it needs to be clean. Um, and then once that's done, then we can start uh, uh, spreading this soil out and getting us a level pad. We need a 48 foot by 40 foot level pad in here, but to get that level pad, we're probably gonna have 120 feet across the back here. Uh, I haven't measured it out this morning. And then probably 120 foot up that way, and then a hard cut across that hill. And then of course we could find rock in there and stuff. Uh, it is a little bit more than renting a piece of equipment and getting this stuff done. If you want it to last, if you want it done the right way, then you contact somebody to help you with a design plan. And then you don't need necessarily engineering drawings on, a, on an agricultural property, but you do need to have somebody who knows what they've done. If they built roads, forest roads, if they've built uh, pad sites for garages or sheds, if they've ultimately um, done some earthworks such as, as not dams, you need to get engineers to do dams, but they've done non-water retaining earthworks, then consider it. But what you're looking for as a property owner is are they keying in the bar? Now they might say, oh no, you don't need a key in a bar because uh, you know that's only for a dam. 
No, you need to key it in because even solid soil structures can hold water. And when they reach saturation, if there's nothing holding it back, it will go in a mudslide. Are they looking at level structures? Are they looking at uh, good enough or do they actually have a design drawing? Even handwritten drawing is better than no drawing at all. And then finally, do they have an idea how long it's gonna take? So for example, when we needed more clay, we, we got more clay on site. We, we had, we'd already discussed that in advance. So if you wanna make this work better as a homeowner, as a property owner, you're gonna hire contractors or you're gonna have a project management plan in place so that you have an idea of how things are working. You can verify the advice that folks are giving you. Uh, you also wanna make sure that you're separating the topsoil. That we had some trouble getting a lot of this topsoil out and you can see it's kinda of dusted with maybe an inch or two of topsoil on here. But as we move along, we keep moving the topsoil off because the topsoil is necessary to then come back in top dress so that we can get grass growing fast. I've shown you growing grass on clay, but it grows so much faster on compost or topsoil. And then finally, maintain a daily budget because at $600 a load, the rock that's coming in here is precious. The clay is precious. The resources are precious. So you gotta maintain that daily plan because if you had to stop a project like this now, now this is kind of stable, but if we had to stop this project now, I still need to straw, I, uh, seed it and straw it and then um, cut some channels uh, on contour to prevent any erosion running. Now, even the piles of mulch and materials on the bottom here are part of our, our runoff management. Should we have a rain event, we don't want any of the soil to leave this space. We don't want, uh, we'll have puddles of stuff in these holes, but uh, we don't want anything to leave this space. We want it to stay stable. These are all parts of what's necessary. It isn't just, you know, hire a dirt monkey and get it done. It has to be done the right way. If this was gonna be taller, we would need to have drain, a drain field in here uh, so that the water can get out of the terrace uh, rather than being stuck in the terrace. Now it could be done different ways. It could be done with a gravel pit. It could be done with uh, French drains. It could be done a quite, a, quite a few different ways. And if we were going to excavate any deeper or any more square footage, we'd have to get soil disturbance permits and things like that. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Ask questions in the comments below. Uh, we have a course on land management projects for farmers and homesteaders that has a library of reference materials, including the Army Corps of Engineer materials that I use to do this design. And then also how in the state of Virginia did I determine whether or not I need to have a actual general contractor or on an agricultural property, could we do it ourselves? Or do I need to have larger equipment in place? Now, budget's gonna be a constraint. Availability's gonna be a constraint. There's a lot of constraints. I can help you with that as we design a plan or manage a plan. I'm Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead, www.prosperityhomestead.org to ask your questions. And I'm here to help you realize your small farm, homestead, or estate dream where you're able to get the property you want, develop it for your family, develop it for generations, and live uh, in, a, in a holistic, environmentally friendly way. You know, back to land if you want it that way. Thanks for watching.